Welcome to The Buzz. I'm Charlotte Pruitt. And I'm Brogan Craner. This week we're talking about Wendy Williams fainting on live TV and the Justin Bieber Selena Gomez saga. Plus, Megan Ely is back with Truth or Trash. That's all coming up right now on The Buzz. Starting off our countdown at number three, the faint that shocks social media. A lot of people thought that was a joke. Uh, me fainting on my set, no, that was not a joke. You know, I don't want to fall. I'm a tall woman, and um, it's, it's a long way down. I'm also a woman of a particular age, and I'm not trying to break anything. And, I don't, and also, I don't do stunts and jokes for you like that. I, I don't need that. So that was Wendy explaining what happened when she passed out on live TV during the Halloween episode of her show on Tuesday. Production quickly cut to commercial. Many viewers found this footage disturbing and some questioned whether it was staged. After the break, Williams returned saying, quote, that was not a stunt. I overheated in my costume. I passed out. I'm a champ and I'm back. What was your initial reaction when you saw that? Well, my, official, well, my initial reaction was that, you know, I was pretty shocked by it. She stumbled backwards. She had a weird look in her eyes and so, Anytime I've seen a faint, I've just seen them go down immediately, right. so I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, see, that was one, that, my initial reaction was that it was a stunt. I was one of those people. Uh -huh. So, you know, but when she came back and said, I really overheated, I, I believe her, but I hope she's okay. Yeah, I hope she's okay. And she did come back right after that. She returned to the show again mm -hmm. tomorrow, as you saw right there. So, um, or the next day, I should mm -hmm. say. So, yeah, she, she's, she looks like she's fine. Yeah, and next on our countdown, this week saw even more sexual misconduct allegations in Hollywood. Actors Kevin Spacey, Jeremy Piven, Dustin Hoffman, and producer Brett Ratner have all been accused of sexual misconduct this week. Actor Anthony Rapp told BuzzFeed Kevin Spacey made unwanted sexual advancements toward him when Rapp was just 14. The House of Cards actor said on Twitter that he didn't remember the incident. He publicly came out as gay for the first time in the same post. Kevin Spacey's publicist told the New York Times on Wednesday that the actor will seek treatment. This comes after several men have accused Spacey of acting inappropriately toward them. Netflix has halted production of Spacey's hit show, House of Cards, and it doesn't end there. The LA Times reported that six women have come forward accusing the Revenant producer, Brett Ratner, of sexual misconduct. Yeah, and Ratner denies these allegations, but announced that he is stepping back from Warner Brothers. Jeremy Piven, another actor accused of predatory behavior this week, also denies these claims. Dustin Hoffman, on the other hand, has apologized in a statement to The Hollywood Reporter. He said he's very sorry he ever put anyone in an uncomfortable situation after an intern accused him of sexual misconduct. And coming in at number one, Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez look like they're back together. We reported last week that Bieber and Gomez have been hanging out again, but now that Selena and The Weeknd have called it quits, the possibility of there being a Jelena resurrection has become even more plausible. The couple was spotted out on Wednesday riding bikes around Los Angeles, laughing and singing, an eyewitness told E! News. Even TMZ founder Harvey Levin told USC that the two are definitely back together. Well, we're definitely holding out hope that they'll rekindle their romantic sure. relationship. But what do you guys think? Let us know on Twitter at USC The Buzz. And if you're on campus, Kendall is outside asking students if Selena should choose The Weeknd or Bieber. Let's see who students are voting for. Hi guys, so we are back with another survey. It's been a while, miss you guys. We have this week, are you happy that Jelena is back together? Apparently on Sunday, they were seen going to church together and getting smoothies, important stuff. She dropped the weekend, so sad and super awkward because apparently they were all three supposed to hang out when those two were dating. Don't know what happened there. Oh well. So right now we have a lot of votes. The USC students are apparently very psyched that this couple, this dream team is back together. We do have some no's. People are kind of a little bummed that The weekend and Selena, they were really cute together. Oh, by the way, did you know she's a bit of a cougar? He's a bit younger than her. She's going back to the younger man versus the older. Just thought I would update you guys. And we actually had a quick, people wanted the I don't care box, so we added that right away when people wanted it. And we actually do have a good amount of I don't cares. People have other passions in life that don't involve Jelena. Surprise, surprise. All right, well, that's it for over here. We will keep you updated and get a full tally coming back next time. See you guys later. Thanks, Kendall. Very informative out there course, on Justin and always. Selena, of course. <laughs> Anyways, on last week's episode, Charlotte and I dressed up for Halloween. We uploaded those pictures to our Twitter and asked who had the better costume. And by a vote of 80% to 20%, the winner is, drum roll please, me. 
Of course it is. <laughs> Charlotte wins everything. She won the pumpkin. She's now winning this. So, so thank you, Twitter fans. Charlotte. Shouts out to you. I Clearly really a fan favorite it. here. <laughs> Anyways, while I try to pick up my pride off the floor, Megan is back with another segment of Truth or Trash. Thanks, guys. Well, Charlotte, congratulations, Brogan. You'll get her next time. Uh, welcome back to Truth or Trash, where I break down the craziest celebrity rumors and reveal if they're true or total trash. First up, are wedding bells ringing for Lady Gaga and boyfriend Christian Carino? Although an article by US, Us Weekly claims that Carino popped the question, GossipCop.com says the rumor is simply untrue. The two were first spotted together when Gaga performed at the Super Bowl halftime show in February. But based on all the speculation, I think the rumors of an engagement are total trash. And did Miley Cyrus compare Hannah Montana to toddlers and tiaras? This is actually so true. It sounds like living as Hannah and Miley was not the best of both worlds after all. Miley spoke to CBS about living in the Disney universe and said that dressing up in a wig was a little toddlers and tiaras. She also said that living that double life caused extreme damage to her psyche as an adult. And finally, was a Stranger Things star detained at LAX and sent back to the UK? One report claimed drug sniffing dogs found small amounts of cocaine in his luggage. This is strange, but it's at least partially true. Charlie Heaton, who plays Jonathan on the hit Netflix show, released a statement confirming he was stopped by U.S. authorities and sent home to London, but denies being charged with any crime. And he did not confirm the specific reasons why he was denied access to the U.S. That's all for Truth or Trash this week. Let's toss it back to Charlotte and Brogan at the desk. Thanks, Megan. And while some of those stories are trash, it is true that Beyonce has joined the cast of Disney's live action version of The Lion King. The singer will be playing Nala alongside her on-screen love interest, Dan Danny Glover. Disney tweeted a photo of the cast, which includes John Oliver and Seth Rogen. Yeah, and anyways, Disney continues to make these live action movies. So Charlotte and I are going to pretend to be casting agents and try to cast future Disney live action movies. Yes. So let's get right to it. We're going to cast Ariel first of all with uh, The Little Mermaid. So Charlotte, who would you choose to play Ariel? I'm pretty confident about this one, and I picked Amy Adams. Okay, very nice. She has the red locks yes, to go she with definitely it. Has, ooh, she definitely has the look. You know, she's very sophisticated, and I think she could definitely be a great Disney star. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And I personally chose Emma Roberts. I think that she has that youthful mm -hmm. vibe that Ariel has. She could dye her hair red, and plus it's a little red in that picture mm -hmm. anyways. Um, Plus, I also feel like she's one of those actresses who can just like randomly sing fantastically. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that she would be perfect to play The Little actually, Mermaid. I actually agree with you on that one. Really? I'll give you that one just because she really just because she's younger. Um, I'm not a huge fan of hers, honestly, but I think she could be really good in that role. All right. So I'll take that point. OK, good for you. We have Emma Roberts Winner playing there. Ariel. <laughs> All right. And our next one is Ursula from The Little Mermaid. So with the same cast who would be playing alongside Emma Roberts, I think it would be Rosie O'Donnell. I think that's a good one. I think it's a really good one. I mean, she's known to be kind of, you know, tough and, you know, she comes out a lot with her strong opinion. So I think she could be like a nice villain character. Definitely. Now, my choice might shock you. I chose the president of the United States, Donald Trump. <laughs> now, I'll tell you why. I think that he can definitely be like John Travolta in Hairspray, play a female, dress him up. Uh, it will have to be in four years when he is no longer in the presidency. But, um, I think they're willing to wait that long for Donald Trump to play Ursula. See, I think, first of all, nobody would see the movie if or that live action event. I would. Are you kidding me to see Donald Trump play but I Ursula? I also think that he would never agree to that. No, there's no so, way. So I think Rosie O'Donnell's the better choice, although I think it is very interesting that we have these two against each yeah, other because they usually they do battle. Feud. Yeah. So I'm I would. Gonna go I'm going to give it to Rosie. I'm going to give it to Rosie. <laughs> Donald right. Trump, you're out. I have this one. All right, Mulan. Who do we cast for the live action movie of Mulan? I personally picked Lucy Liu. I think they have a resemblance. They're both very beautiful. The cartoon of Mulan is stunning. Um, and I think that, you know, she's been in Charlie's Angels. She's definitely had some really strong woman roles, which I think Mulan encompasses. Definitely. And my choice is Jamie Chung. She was a reality star. She was on The Real World. She's turned into a pretty big actress. I mean, she plays big time roles every now and again. But I think that she has a youthful vibe that Mulan needs. She's also a um, total warrior, in my opinion. So um, I think absolutely I won this one. I mean, she's like a, Lucy Liu's a bigger name. much more established yeah. actress. And I pick Lucy Liu. All right. Jamie Chung yes. is out. Won this one, too. 
All right. Ooh, I just exposed my Go next for it, then. one. Who is Eddie Redmayne? For the part of Peter Pan. As Peter Pan. Peter Pan. I think that's a good one. I mean, that guy can play anything. Mm -hmm. He's played um, a transgender person mm -hmm. before. He's played plenty of different roles, so I think he can definitely adapt to that. So I think that's a good choice in your I part. Think, and I think they, they definitely have a resemblance. He has reddish hair and a boyish look. I think he yeah. can be Peter Pan. Plus, his last name starts with red, so. Yeah, so there you go. He has a red mane. So he's ha! got it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I chose a newcomer to the Hollywood scene. I chose KJ Appa, who is known for Riverdale. Mm -hmm. He clearly has the red hair. Um, he also is very popular right now among the young audience. So I think he'd be great for that role. I actually think that he is a better choice because I think, first of all, he looks just like the cartoon. Like the facial yeah. structure, everything I mean, is that. spot on. And also I think you're right. I think he would get a younger audience than Eddie, who kind of has more like adult, sophisticated roles. Yeah. So, so are we going for him? We're going for him. All right. Congrats. Eddie Redmond. I mean, KJ Appa. <laughs> Peter Pan. Almost got that off. And guess who these are? What would you say that is? Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. So I picked... Amanda Seyfried, okay. because I think she is just the perfect part of the role. Once again, she's young. She looks a lot like Sleeping Beauty would. And I think, you know, we have to pick Disney characters. She is someone who's very wholesome and always plays roles that are kind of like a damsel in distress yeah. type. So I think she's perfect. And she's also sang before in Mamma Mia yes. and Les Miserables. So mm -hmm. I think that would actually be a great choice. Mm -hmm. But I chose uh, Margot Robbie. Now she is known for kind of playing like a Boston strong female. So <laughs> yes, like me. to kind of <laughs> be more like feminine and princessy would be a different role for her. But I think she'd be great. I think that she definitely has the blonde locks for it. Um, See, I, I just smile. think of her in Wolf of Wall Street. And me so too. it's hard for me to kind of put her in a Disney role. Um, so I'm going to stick with Amanda Sayers. All right, I, I, I agree with that one. Okay, yes. <laughs> All right, and our last one is for Tarzan. Who did you pick? Okay, I chose Chris Hemsworth. I mean, how can you deny the locks there, his long, long hair? That would be perfect for Tarzan. Plus, he has the muscle, and I just think he looks exactly like Tarzan. See, he's like my biggest Hollywood crush, so I love him, but I still stick with Hugh Jackman. You know, he's been in X-Men. He has definitely done action roles before, and I think if you just threw some long hair on him, which he's had before, I yeah. think he resembles Tarzan a lot more than Chris would. I'm going to argue, though, I think ah. Chris Hemsworth would be perfect for Tarzan. Really? Okay, so this is our first tie. So, so you know, I think we, we really both did well there. We both did great. Congratulations. Congratulations to you, Char. <laughs> I also think that if they did a live action with any of these people, it would be a huge success. Yes, I think so, too. We would definitely tune in here on the bus. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, if anyone is interested in hiring us as casting agents, we're definitely looking for summer internships. <laughs> now let's head back out to Kendall to see the final poll results. Are students head, still head over heels for Jelena, or are they hoping for a Selena weekend reunion? All right, guys, so the votes are in. We have 56 votes no. for Jelena Gieber. That's their mashup name. I mean, how could you not vote for the cutest couple mashup name? The weekend and Selena just didn't have a couple mashup name. But let me tell you something. We had a very close tie for a hard no and a I don't care. I don't care came out in 29, no came out in 31. People are very, very adamant about this. Maybe they like the Dodgers more and care about that more than the weekend. I don't know. But so, it, but can you imagine in the future there might be a, a bunch of little Giebers running around, get very, very excited for this. We want to know if you have a vote, put it in the Facebook poll. Do you like the name Jelena Gieber? Do you wish the weekend? No, so weekend was back together. <laughs> See, it doesn't even work. It doesn't even work, you guys. Or do you predict Selena's next boy? We want to know. Please vote. Please te text us. Don't text us. Please put it in the Facebook post. All right, thanks, and back to you guys. <laughs> thanks, Kendall. Yeah, I personally think Abelina would be better than Sil Weekend. Or yeah, that sounds said. a little bit better. So Abelina, we'll go with that. For sure. <laughs> Anyways, that will do it for us today on The Buzz. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have anything else to say, please tweet us at USC The Buzz. Thanks so much.